Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Mysteries and Oddities video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's do one last one here for this go-round and then give this series a brief pause. I'll probably start focusing on the aliens and UFOs videos since it seems like a lot of you keep asking for those. Or I might just focus on another one I haven't decided just yet. But for this last one, I thought I would actually mix in two in one. And that's because these suggestions, both of them by themselves wouldn't be enough to cover a single video but instead mixing them together into one definitely hits the spot i do this every now and then when it comes to like let's say the mix plays where a perfect scenario like this comes into place but both of these have to do with very interesting stuff that i've that i've looked at in the past and it's a great opportunity to be able to share here in this case one has to do with the avocado and the mystery surrounding it in other words it should have gone extinct as 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 a, as a fruit um, or in this case as a, a piece of food especially because of the fact that it has a large seed in it i'll talk about that here in a minute and then the other one has to do with in this case a japanese manga and why it's black and white which is in which ties into the japanese cell phone culture which i find very very fascinating and i'll talk about more information on that too in a few minutes but let's go ahead and let's illustrate first the information about the avocado so yes the avocado i don't like it um, i hate the taste of it but a lot of people absolutely love it well interestingly enough this is a fruit that should have been extinct a long time ago and it has to do with this when you think about your average fruit or vegetable its whole purpose is to essentially have seed dispersal. All these tiny seeds within itself, its whole purpose is to fall or grow uh, from the ground or fall from a tree, have something eat it, whatever it is, it could be an insect, it could be an animal, it could be us, and then essentially have this stuff found later on in some other parts of that land or even other parts of the world. So for example, if let's say your average animal finds something to eat, in this case a fruit, it eats it, it defecates the seed afterward elsewhere, and then the life of that fruit or vegetable continues afterward. That's its whole existence, is to try to have every excuse possible to have something eat it, and then that way it can continue its seed, its growth, throughout other parts of the land or of the world. Now, when you think about then the avocado having just one giant seed, think of it this way. It makes it very hard for animals to eat it. I mean, obviously, they'll eat the, 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 uh, the taste, the fruit surrounding it, but not the seed. It defeats the whole purpose. So unless this seed is able to then be found in the ground somewhere else, then it basically just rots away. So if that happens, it should have been extinct a very long time ago. Interestingly enough, there was a time period that it had its prime in terms of its existence. This was, according to the SmithsonianMag.com article I found, the Cenozoic era. This was an era involving those giant uh, mammals, like in this case the mammoths, the sloths, giant things, in other words, roaming the earth, that would have been perfect to eat this plant. To them, a seed like this would have been no issues. They would have eaten the whole fruit. They would have defecated the seed afterward. The cycle would have continued. But once those giant mammals started dying, then all the smaller animals that took over, and it's interesting because, yes, there was an era of basically small animals that ended up ruling the earth, they would have had problems with this plant as I mentioned earlier. They're not going to eat a giant seed. They'll probably choke on it. They'll die pretty much outright. So why did the avocado continue existing? Well, it all has to do with us, humans. So the way the story goes was towards the end of the Cenozoic era, which is somewhere around 10,000 to 15,000 years ago, that's when humans started to cultivate and they started to, to grow in terms, I guess if you could call it like the evolutionary stance. They started to eat more things, which included someone somewhere finding the avocado, tasting it, and then realizing, you know what, this could make a pretty good piece of meal going forward and then of course finding that giant seed within it so with the rise of humans and then humans using this as a piece of fruit to eat they started taking the seeds and then manually planting them elsewhere so that's essentially how 
the story goes of the avocado surviving afterward. It should have absolutely disappeared. Evolution should have had this thing become a relic, something that we probably would have only found fossils of afterward, kind of like imprints, not actual like real fossils, but in this case imprints. But it's us coming around that time period and then deciding that it's something to eat that saved this thing. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that interesting? You would never think that a giant seed would have that kind of problems. But yes, it does make sense when you think about it that way. In fact, to this end, something like after 13,000 years or so of existence, uh, it's become one of the most popular fruits in the world. I mean, in my case, again, I don't like it. I've tasted avocado. I hate it. Other people just live and die by it. It seems like this is the absolute best thing in the world to them. And apparently in California, it's something like 90% of the avocados are grown there in this world. I did not know that. Someone might have to point out if that's different. But according to that link that I'll include below, that's essentially what it states. So pretty fascinating stuff. If you've ever, you're never going to look at an avocado the same way again afterward. Now, as far as the other mystery naughty, it has to do with manga. And that is, of course, the very popular form of comic books or some of the some form of comics there in Japan. And the fact that it's always been in black and white in a world, in this case, of so many comic books easily going into color and in some cases even more prestige coloring formats like uh let's say uh painted stuff no in this case manga remains black and white someone has suggested this so i looked more into it and it turns out one it's first off it's it's cheaper um it's the fact that doing it this way it just makes it so less costly to to, to have this stuff printed but more importantly it's because apparently this stuff is done weekly or even quicker when it comes to its production. Unlike here in America, where comic books come out once a month, and that's on a good month. In some cases, the uh, larger, uh, bigger events have comics that come out once every two months, once every couple of months. No, in this case, they come out weekly. So you have to have very fast production, and that's where black and white comes into place. Also because it, it's sold very cheaply in Japan, and it's become a tradition. And it ties into this that I was mentioning earlier, the cell phone culture there in Japan. So it's amazing how different countries operate differently in this world. Here in the U.S., the feature phone, like the flip phones and other types of feature phones, are pretty much gone. I mean, you probably have less than, I don't know, 5% of users, something along those lines. I'd be surprised if there's even close to 10% when it comes to the flip phones. I love flip phones. I used to have one for the longest time until finally uh websites like yahoo yahoo mail uh facebook and others just have just abandoned them outright when it comes to accessing them so i had to eventually move onto the smartphone well in japan it stayed true when it comes to feature phones like people still use them it's a culture there it's known as the cell phone culture specifically uh this place there in japan still holds on to it and in fact right now over 50 percent of cell phones are smartphone i mean are are uh feature phones, flip phones, and less than half of them remain smartphones. This is into mangas because mangas are so cheap that they're actually sold directly onto the feature phones themselves. People get them as text. Can you believe that? Uh, I was looking at some of the info on that, and so they're created so cheaply, and they're sent so cheaply, uh, the costs of them, I think, somewhere uh, translate to around 4 or $5 on the more expensive side, and it's like 2 to $4 on the more cheaper side, that you could have something produced weekly and then people there in Japan read them there on the cell phone itself. Also, there's a fact that they absorb another type of culture, in this case, the cell phone novel that are also sent by text messaging. This is pretty fascinating stuff, too. Um, there in Japan, if you go, like, let's say you're traveling around, uh, whether you're going to work or in a school or some other place, and you use the public transportation method, it's very, very much like a taboo to talk, to be talking on the phone or to be answering phones. And so because of it, they have created a culture where instead it's almost like complete silence unless I guess you're talking to other people within the public transportation. And then that's why the rise of the cell phone novel, which ties into the manga, comes into place. Because there you have all these things that are sent electronically, and then people read them. One of the best examples I have is this one, this Silent Hill uh, novel that was there in Japan that I wish 
this kind of stuff was here. Because imagine if you have a novel that you can read, but it's interactive. Eventually you get to certain points where you move around and you click on things. And when you do so, then you come across like, a, I guess you could call it like a, a sound or something like motion that clicks in right during certain important parts of the novel. And then it continues more towards a text-based stuff. I wish we had that stuff here. Instead, we just have plain old boring Kindle type stuff where you just read it, which doesn't mean if I'm going to read it on the screen, imagine I'll read it on a book. I'm a little bit more old fashioned that way. But if we adopted something like this, like in this case, a cell phone novel involving more on the lines of weekly type stuff like this or weekly type comics that are addressed to this, I would so absolutely love something along these lines but interesting stuff isn't it the, how two different cultures uh operate two different ways and all of this again coming from the suggestion involving the manga type stuff and this the japanese culture of the cell phone which ties into all the other neat little features that they have there but yes in essence it's just created that way in black and white because it's cheaper it's quicker you can sell it so much more easily on uh, the cell phone which is their main culture there especially on the flip phones and also on the feature phones although it seems like this 2016 2017 was the year predicted where finally smartphones are going to create more than 50 percent of of uh, the total usage there in japan i'm going to try to see if i can find anything that shows an update since we're now in 2018 to see if that was true but if anybody's there in japan and has anything different let me know but to, to what I just stated, it'd be great to hear if, if someone actually lives there and can correlate and say, yes, absolutely, like this is correct. Or if this is just uh, just something else that just seems so foreign that, I, that I'm just completely wrong and, and would like to point out differently, then please share it with everyone else here too. But what do you guys think? Any other information I'm going to miss? Anything else that stands out? Any avocado lovers out there too? It's a horrible tasting fruit to me, but other ones out there seem to love it. They absolutely must have it with their chips or whatever else they eat it with and then those of you that live in japan and have a more personal experience with regards to the mangas the cell phone novels the cell phone culture itself then please please let me know that'd be great to hear too so all right everybody thanks again as always take care bye